all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. It's systemic throughout law enforcement that in times of crisis, other agencies come to assist. Yeah, police officers helping each other in a time of tragedy. We'll tell you what other departments have come to Bristol to help out with patrols. Campaign season is here, and as we inch closer to Election Day, Fox AC1 is informing you to keep you informed before casting your ballot. So today we're looking at political polls. Also, breaking news overnight, a Russian warplane fell out of the sky. We'll tell you what we know about the crash. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us and starting off your day here at Fox 61 America Areas. And I'm Tim Lammers. I'm imagining a fair amount of uh, the state got a little bit of a soaking of rain overnight. We and sure I'm did. Yeah. Guessing most of us still needed it. Not that we've really been in trouble with uh, the drought. The drought situation. Right. Compared to yeah. where we were. But. Yeah. Well, about a month ago at this time, we were like, mm, where's the rain? And, and then we had a really wet September, August, late August and September. Uh, but we have fixed that. And yeah, it rained for just about everybody last night. Still going on in the northeastern part of the state. We'll talk about that. But the rain's winding down. Cool temperatures taking over. But what about some frost? We'll talk about that potential with the seven day. And there is a sunny streak. Does it warm us up? Because it does need some warming. 53 in Hartford, 55 in New Haven, 57 in Groton, 40s off to the West. You know what? I don't see the temperatures getting too much warmer than what we have uh, out there now. We're going to keep it in the 50s uh, throughout uh, much of the state. A little bit of rain up in uh, Tolland, Wyndham County, just kind of straddling the border there between Stores and Ashford to go in a little closer uh, to take it to Route 89. Nathaniel Lyon Memorial Park on 198 hasn't quite gotten to you guys yet over in Chaplin. Watch the guidance. You'll see a little bit of activity this morning, but it does bust up and that will be it. Not only for the day with the rain, but pretty much for a few days with the rain. 51 now, but look at the numbers later on, even with the sun only getting up to 55 degrees. Real cool down to talk about. Talk about how long that's going to last in the seven day coming up. Let's see what's going on on the roads. A lot of leaves on those side roads. That's that gumming up, it's making yeah. it a little slick out there. Be careful. Yeah, extremely slick. So, yeah, people do have to be careful. Great morning there, Matt. Good morning, everyone. Luckily, out on the highways, really not too much to get to. A lot of construction was on pause last night because of the rainfall. So it's been a pretty quiet morning commute throughout the 5 and the 6 o'clock hour so far. Let's bring you out to the Hartford area. We are seeing a little bit of delay on Route 2 over in uh, the East Hartford area, but overall, things are looking pretty good. Let's take a live look out in Hartford, 91 north and southbound. This is right at exit 33 Jennings Road. We have a little bit of extra volume volume when 91 branches off to 84, but overall really not too much to complain about. And then in East Hartford, this is over on the Bulkley Bridge. Things are moving smoothly over on I-84 East and Westbound. And oh, I thought I had a spider on me for a second. Oh, that scared me. Uh, over on 95 and Route 15, things are looking good as well. New Haven moving into West Haven, Milford, Stratford, 91 to 95 is looking good. We'll check in again on the roads coming up in the next half hour. But for now, Tim and Erica, back over to you. Lauren, thanks. The Bristol community continues to mourn the loss of two police officers who were killed in the line of duty Wednesday, Sergeant Dustin DeMonte and Officer Alex Hamsey. And so the law enforcement community across the state is helping the Bristol Police Department through this difficult time. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane is live in Bristol with more on who is helping today and how. Hi, good morning. Well, the memorial for those fallen officers here outside the Bristol Police Department just continues to grow. A beautiful yet heartbreaking tribute for Sergeant Dustin DeMonte and Officer Alex Hamsey. And it's the community showing their support in ways like this. You can see right behind me that's really just overwhelming now. But also support from police departments across the state are starting to come into effect and departments are also pitching in to help. Officers around Connecticut came together for processions for those two officers a vigil. Now we're coming in to pick up shifts at the Bristol Police Department. Some Bristol officers went back to work on Sunday, just a few days after those officers were tragically killed. Law enforcement agencies across Connecticut have been aiding with patrol, dispatch, and wherever else help is needed to cover their shifts or bring company to officers back on duty. The Berlin Police Department's just one of those agencies stepping in, along with state police, shifting their resources for the city of Bristol. Berlin officers are riding along with Bristol officers who are back to work, so no one's left alone. 
and state police have been there right from the start, picking up patrols as needed. Sergeant Christine Jeltima says their help will never expire. Uh, during the times of the funeral and the wakes, whatever coverage Bristol needs, whatever the chief needs, whatever his officers needs, we are there for them. I know there were a couple of Bristol police officers uh, that were there to help in, in case we had questions about their communities and their towns. And that support has really been a common theme throughout the law enforcement community since this tragedy. Although their patches from department to department are different, they say their job is the same and they'll be there for Bristol as long as the city needs in order to support their brothers and sisters in blue. Now coming up in the next hour, we hear more from the Berlin police chief with more of the volunteers that his department has that are wanting to step in and help. And of course, it's been just an overwhelming amount of support that we've seen from the first responder community right from the get-go. And that support only continues to get bigger and stronger. Tim and Erica, back over to you. Well, Lindsay, there's a lot more than just flowers there. Some people also wrote messages. Can you share some of what you're seeing? Yes, a lot of those messages were actually written by students. As we know, Sergeant Dustin DeMonte was a school resource officer. Now you can see here this big poster. Thank you for your service. Rest in peace. That was made by a student. And here on this sign, or on the car rather, if you can see, this is one of the, um, the messages that I saw this morning that really stuck out. Brightest lights, brightest smiles, extraordinary hearts are heroes. So a lot of messages like this. Just overwhelming outside the Bristol Police Department this morning. And as you said, the flowers, the candles, the balloons and the messages just continue to come by the day. We even saw people coming out here early this morning, around five o'clock this morning, coming again to pay their respects. OK, Lindsay Kane, thank you so much. Reporting live from Bristol. And in just two days, how about this? More than $230,000 has been raised for the DeMonte and Hamsey families. The Bristol Police Department is spearheading the fund the first effort and said those families have enough to deal with right now without having to worry about the lost income. And I don't ever want them to have to look at their bank account or bills and, and worry. And that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish is getting the word out about this fund and doing everything that we can so that they don't ever have to worry about that again. And they're hoping this act of kindness will go a long way towards easing those worries. This is coming as people from across the nation and here in Connecticut continue to come together to on the, honor these officers and their families. We mentioned it's happening outside of Connecticut, too. Uh, the very popular website Barstool Sports is also honoring them in a special way. They're trying to raise money by selling T-shirts and sweatshirts. Uh, the author of an article that uh, mentioned this fundraiser said he's from Bristol and has two uh, friends who are on the force right now. They said 100% of the proceeds will go towards supporting the DeMonte and Hamsey families. And given the reach of this website, we hope that they can generate a lot of money by selling those uh, T-shirts and sweatshirts. And we're told that calling hours for Sergeant Dustin DeMonte are private. We do know calling hours for Officer Alex Hamsey have been scheduled for tomorrow. They're going to take place at Lyceum Banquet Hall. That's in Terraville. It's happening from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And it is open to the public. So if you plan on attending, you are going to have to park at the Terryville Fairgrounds. And then shuttles will be available to take people to the Banquet Hall and then back. Also important to note, Route 6 in that area is going to be closed to all traffic. We have all this information. You can recap it all over on our website. Just head over to fox61.com. And on Friday, Bristol police say there will be a joint funeral for Sergeant DeMonte and Officer Hamsey at Rensselaer Field in East Hartford. It's going to be at 11 a.m. It is open to the public, so if you want to go and pay your respects, you should get there by 930. Bristol police excuse me, Bristol Public Schools are going to be closed on Friday for the funerals. And we're going to have continuing coverage for you throughout the week as we honor and remember Sergeant DeMonte and Officer Hamsey. We have much more on the officers who were shot, the timeline of what happened, and how people around the state are continuing to remember these fallen heroes. Head over to fox61.com, our Fox 61 News app, and it's also available on Fox 61 Plus. Well, Bloomfield police said they arrested a man who hit a police officer with his car while trying to get away from a traffic stop. They said they initially stopped 37-year-old uh, Rafaelito Ares shortly after 11 o'clock Monday morning on Mountain Avenue. They said his car had a misused license plate. 
Now, police said Ares drove off during that stop, hitting the officer with the car door and mirror. Thankfully, the officer was not badly hurt. Police said they caught up with Aris again in West Hartford, where they popped his tires with stop sticks. He's now facing 13 criminal charges from that alone. And on top of that, police said he had five active criminal warrants out for his arrest. Well, happening today, a woman accused of being a part of a string of car break-ins is expected in court. 26-year-old Hannah Kasperson is also accused of crashing into eight police cruisers and injuring seven officers during a long car chase across two communities. This was back in April when she was wanted in connection to 41 car break-ins and other thefts in Woolcott. A man also accused of the crimes was arrested. He's due in court next month.